That's his pride Why? and joy, man. He's he's uh, you know he's roll tied. I hadn't said one thing. I'm just sitting here enjoying being back. See how long with my we crew. can keep it. Matches his nice okay. suit too. It's nice. It's nice. Nice. Uh, you know, concoction he got going on there today. Just hatred. James all really, around. I'll say it just all the hatred. time. Is a team player. <laughs> So nice. The Lakers continue their seven-game road trip with a matchup versus the Chicago Bulls tonight. The Purple and Gold won the first matchup of the season at Staples Center, 117-115, back on January 8th. And tonight they will look to improve upon their franchise best 8-0 start on the road. As we look at the teams with the best road starts in the last 50 years, Lakers will look to tie your 93-94 Rocket squad tonight in Chicago, Rob. <laughs> Hey, you, well, is it beat up on Rob Knight today? That's an awesome stat. Oh, you know, that that was <laughs> you know, my first championship better. right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, first championship. 93-94? Yeah, we ran out. We started that season 15 and up. I was five years old. Uh, with that said, <laughs> the road trip <laughs> rolls on a uh, big game. What a great start uh, for the team with that statement win in Milwaukee. They have said since last season they don't want to win two games in a row, and they've been good. They don't want to lose, excuse me, two games in a row. They've been good at holding themselves to that. You call that a statement win, a signature win so far? Their yeah, signature? yeah. I, I think I think there were two things going on uh, in, in that uh, the, the last game against the Bucks. They lost the game to the Warriors. Uh, they were very uh, a little pissed off because they let that one get out uh, of the win column. And then you're talking about a guy that won MVP last year over LeBron and, uh, you know, defensive player of the year as well. So, you know, LeBron quietly and methodically went in there and kept his team, you know, above water in, in, the, first, in the first half. And then, you know, it was the first time this season he scored over 30. So, yeah, I think there was a couple statements there. Look, we can't be losing against the Warriors when we had them down. And we need to show Giannis that we possibly had an MVP and the best defensive player on our team last year. They just happened to give it to him. Oh, by the way, we, we got like half a worthy clap out of James on Thursday. Too. I saw that. Yeah, yeah I saw you it. knew there was something. Yeah, it was something. For yeah. me, watching this game, I wanted to see how they were going to approach the defensive player of the year, the MVP of the year. And you can tell Giannis came out going at the Lakers. I mean, you saw mm -hmm. some elbows. He pushed LeBron in the back one time. He kind of elbowed AD. And I think they probably says, hold on now. You know, you didn't win these awards. We should be, we both should be sharing it. And it kind of woke them up, especially LeBron, because I don't know if y'all remember in the first half, it was a play under the basket where Giannis kind of Push LeBron and LeBron turned around and he had that look on his face yeah. as, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> and it's, it's little things like that that I watch in the game yeah. that you want to see how people are going to react because there are times where guys are going to try to come out and, and test you. And I think LeBron showed him that, yo, you might have won MVP, but everybody in the whole world know you really won the MVP. I, I, so yeah. now let me show you what I'm going to do. Got a lot of respect for Giannis, though, because he did have that pregame statement. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding LeBron saying, look, I know LeBron is the best uh, basketball player in the world. It's out of my control that I get these awards. But he did recognize that LeBron, but I don't think LeBron was even going for that statement. He was like, I need to show you out here <laughs> on the court. Because I wouldn't and, go and for it. Did. You wouldn't go I for it. I wouldn't go for it. I'm like, yeah, you just trying to soft me up. I ain't, <laughs> yeah, I ain't I don't going think he for went that. For it. <laughs> so as big of a win as that was, we call it the signature win of the season so far, you turn your attention to tonight in Chicago. It's the second time you faced him. It was just a two-point win. Uh, for the Lakers in that first meeting, but you want to avoid the letdown. It, Chicago is on a roll. They've won three in a row, so there's no disrespect there. They're just a game below 500, but you don't want to come out of Milwaukee feeling real good and then drop one the, the next night, the next game in, in Chicago. Yeah, you definitely can't have a letdown, and to the, tonight, I'm looking at LeBron, looking at AD like, yo, this your town. You need to shine. Yeah. You know, he's from Chicago. He got Chicago on his forearm and so I mean, on, his, on his bicep. So let's go to you. Show everybody in this town what you can do. So I'm looking for LeBron to ride AD. And if you look at, I think, AD, when he came in for the All-Star game, you know, he had a good game there. So he got a good yeah. feel for this arena. And usually when you play in front of the family, that's when you want to shine and show out. So I'm expecting AD to have a good game and LeBron knowing the type of guy he is he's going to get involved early and say you know let's ride your coattails tonight. I think it's an opportunity to really show too for the Lakers that they are that team. There's that maturity there's that 
we can handle these moments and we can achieve these moments in terms of not having that letdown? Yeah, I, I, I agree 100 percent. Once you win a championship, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you're going to have some stinkers out of the 82 game. I guess this year, 72 games. You're going to have a couple games like the Warriors. But your mentality is regardless of how good a team is playing, you know, uh, the Bulls, are, you know, they're, they're trending a little bit. You're a, you're a championship team and you're not supposed to lose to teams that you know you're supposed, supposed to, to beat. You just kind of keep putting that in your mind over and over and over as a championship team, and, and sometimes it comes to fruition. You beat the teams you're supposed to, to beat and, uh, and don't lose any home games. So uh, hopefully that's the mentality that they're, they're trending toward. I think LeBron is one of those guys that knows how to snap back quickly and get his team going. So hopefully they're, they'll have that same mindset tonight. We will see Lakers and Bulls tip off at 6 p.m. right here on Spectrum Sportsnet. Now for the latest on tonight's matchup in the Windy City, let's check in with Lakers reporter Mike Trudell, who is not in the Windy City but the sunny green room. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and first of all, Ali, so you mentioned the streak, right? The big shot, Bob, and the 15 trade. Uh, Bob, it wasn't your fault, okay? Nine for 14, or excuse me, seven for 12 from the field, 19 points, five assists, four steals in that game. You know whose fault it was? Kenny Smith, 0 for 6. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want you to repeat that again so Wait certain up. people <laughs> can hear this. Did you say five Just assists? <laughs> I'm just at five assists, man. Five assists, four steals, 19 points. Numbers don't lie. There Numbers you go. Don't so, lie. big shot. Got I your had back a little over talent here. back in the Good day. Good for you. See, there we go. Good All right, uh, on to. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get on to tonight's game? Good. All right, uh, so guys, we talked to Frank Vogel a couple moments ago, and one thing that the Lakers haven't been doing much the last four games has been running. And I wondered why. So that's where we started with Frank Vogel before getting into the scouting report for the Bulls with a couple of uh, lineup switches and such. Here's the head coach. Yeah, I think the defenses are. are bringing extra defenders back. You know, we were we were really uh, hurting teams with our transition game uh, early in the season, in particular those those two Houston games. And, um, you know, that's that's part of that's that's top of the scouting report with us is you, know, you got to get your defense back or, or uh, you know, we'll punish you that way. And uh, so I, I just think that uh, they're bringing less guys to the glass and getting more defenders back. But, you know, something that we want to continue to uh, emphasize, you know, in terms of I think we're averaging eight fast break points per game in the last four. You know, that's not really Lakers basketball. So we want to get out and run more, uh, force more deflections on the defensive end. That always gets us out more as well. And, um, you know, hopefully we, we pick back up in that, that area. Frank, anything you noticed from that January 8th game against Chicago that it could be a little different now with Markin in back and, and Carter, you know, not playing as, with a stretch five, even though they played Gafford? Like, do you think that could impact the matchup? Yeah, it's definitely going to feel different in a, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, for one, Anthony didn't play uh, for, for us. And, um, you know, obviously Markin didn't play for them. Um, so he gives them sort of that, that third score uh, along with White and, and Levine that could really light you up. Um, you know, no Carter, you know, means we, you know, we could see more Gafford, uh, but we'll also see more small, small lineups or, or five out spacing types of lineups, um, you know, which are always challenging to guard when you're trying to slow down a guy like Zach Levine. So uh, definitely going to feel like a, a different game than last last game. And can a road winning streak, can that be a motivator in itself just to keep it going? Or because I know you're a, you know, focus on the task at hand uh, type of guy. Yeah, I mean, we're taking pride in uh, in how we've come out of the gates uh, playing on the road, but you know, it, it does. We, we've done so by uh, being a stay stay in the moment uh, type of mindset, you know, and, and having that type of uh, mindset with our team. Uh, the only game we can win tonight is is against the Chicago Bulls, so it doesn't matter if we won eight straight or lost eight straight. Uh, we need to win tonight's game, and um, you know, that's where we'll keep our focus. All right, there you go, uh, Ali. Big shot, even outscored Dream. That game, by the way, uh, 19 points to 17. Trudell, Rob does not need any more <laughs> to work with. Hey, okay? I mean, look, Mike you're coming Trump. out of about Alabama. You, to... <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get my guys back here. Hey, now. Big Ten, we got to stay strong. We got to stay together. <laughs> oh, you beat us up too much for that, Allie. Okay. Yeah, Northwestern didn't want any part of that. <laughs> well done, as always. Touche. Uh, keep it here. The Lakers and Bulls are coming up at the top of the hour. Perhaps we'll see THT tonight. The pride of Simeon High is back home in Chicago. THT has not played in the last two games. He should be fresh for this one if his number is called. As we go to break, a look back at the Lakers' statement win over the Bucks. Lakers, Bucks, something's got to give. KC3 again. Catavius called well poked. They get seven threes.
Caruso's open. The Caruso delivers. Boy, that's a big time 